Good morning to everybody watching and all our participants on the COVID-19 public health briefing. It has been another eventful week uh, for our locally and across North Dakota as well as Minnesota. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, mention that it is a public service appreciation week and take a moment to thank all our public health experts and everyone in the teams for working tirelessly and doing life-saving work. Sincerely, thank you to all those who have done that. With that, I'll turn over to the Director of the Fargo Cast Public Health, uh, Desi Fleming. Good morning, everyone. Uh, current data as of yesterday lists 1,266 positive COVID cases in North Dakota, with 643 of those in Cass County, accounting for 51% of the state's positive cases. There have been 18 deaths. However, I am aware that they will be announcing more with today's numbers. Recovered cases stand at 251. The overall North Dakota positivity rate is around 3%, but for Cass County, it is roughly 10%. That being said, there is concern from the governor's office in regards to Cass County numbers and our upward trend. Given the recent loosening of restrictions, this may further impact our numbers. Fargo Cass Public Health met yesterday with the COO and the state health officer from the Department of Health to develop a task force to implement strategies for lowering COVID numbers in Cass County. The governor wants to have a more concerted effort in our area to bring our numbers down over the next month. The concern is that if the numbers continue to increase and people are not following the smart restart guidelines, the risk for a rapid increase of cases in a short amount of time could potentially add strain for healthcare public health resources, and the business community. This could potentially require a need to reinstate tighter restrictions again for our community, which is something we want to avoid. We will be looking at education resources to support North Dakota Restart, messaging opportunities, enhancing contact tracing efforts, identifying vulnerable populations, and implementing more focused testing strategies. Currently in our area, we continue with diagnostic testing by our health systems, which means if someone is symptomatic or has an exposure, they would be tested. We've also had mass testing events, which have been held at the Fargo Dome that are geared towards specific groups. And although these mass events help us to identify some positive cases, they also have people coming through that have very little exposure risk. The types of testing events we would like to focus on in the month ahead are targeted testing events where we are identifying high-risk settings such as congregate living facilities or essential businesses where distancing is difficult and provide on-site testing. We also wanna look at vulnerable groups where we have seen positive cases such as those experiencing homelessness and deploy testing strategies as appropriate. As the need for our local public health resources continues to increase and many of our staff are already tasked with COVID response duties, we will need to partner with the state to support these testing events, similar to the National Guard supporting some of our previous testing at the Fargo Dome. Bottom line and perspective, we need a community effort to make Those this work. The conference. Each and every the one of us wants to get end. back to some sense of a new normal. In doing that, we need to take ownership for our own actions and to think of others in the process. A good example of this is wearing a face covering. Just a few months ago, someone wearing a mask in our area may have drawn attention, but now a face mask is a symbol of the current era we are living in. You wear the mask, but you are wearing it to protect others. I'm fairly confident if I would become COVID positive that I would have a high likelihood of recovering without many issues. I am not confident my parents would fare the same if they were exposed to COVID. Their age puts them in a high risk category. I wear a mask for them. I have friends and coworkers that have underlying health conditions that put them in a high risk category. I wear a mask for them. When I go into the grocery store, I wear a mask for you. Masks are uncomfortable and may not be a fashion statement, but they do serve a purpose. They help to decrease the spread of germs. Please show others respect by wearing a face mask in public spaces. You don't need to purchase or sew one. Like our Surgeon General has demonstrated, a t-shirt and two rubber bands is all you really need to make a mask. I know there are so many people who are frightened, frustrated, and fed up right now. The past two months have felt like many more. It's easy to use criticism and negativity, whether that's through social media outlets or daily interactions, but before you do, take a deep breath and try to remember a few things. This is a new experience for all of us, and new experiences are difficult, unfamiliar, and can cause heightened emotions. 
We need to be flexible and expect change. We are all learning as we go in this pandemic, adjusting as we need. We have frontline staff who are working tirelessly to the needs of this community. Some have not had a day off in seven weeks, but they know they have a job that needs to be done and take pride in serving our community. Brene Brown, a well-known researcher and one of my favorite authors, has a quote that says, sometimes the bravest and most important thing you can do is just show up. For those of you that are showing up every day, thank you for all you do. We all need to support them and each other by being grateful and by being kind in order to build people up rather than tear each other down. I would like to close by acknowledging that today is National Nurses Day. So for all of you nurses out there, thanks for all of your efforts. And to my nursing staff, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for all you do and for showing up every day. I'm incredibly proud of the work you do. Thank you. Thank you, Desi. That was very nice. Our next speaker is Clay County Public Health, uh, Kathy McKay. Thank you and good morning. In Minnesota, and the numbers continue to change daily, but um, as of yesterday, Minnesota had 7,851 positive cases. In Clay County, we had 2,001, um, and those will increase today. Um, the number of deaths in Minnesota were 455. Um, in Clay County, they were 14. So as we as we look at the data, as Desi talked about, there's there's continuing rise in our numbers. Um, the testing in Clay County um, occurs for all, almost all of the residents on the Fargo side. So they are being tested in their healthcare facilities with their um, primary um, care providers at Sanford and Essentia. All those numbers, um, though, are are counted on the Minnesota side when they're a Minnesota resident. Um, in Clay County and in Minnesota, Minnesota Department of Health is responsible for the contact tracing at this point at least, and they will be contacting anyone that is in um, a positive case and they need to follow up with uh, contact tracing and conversations with those individuals. Um, so those test results that are happening in Fargo do go to the Minnesota Department of Health. Um, and then there is follow up. We are also in contact with Minnesota Department of Health about um, some testing that um, we hope to initiate um, in those most vulnerable populations. We do have testing sites in rural Clay County, and those are the Sanford clinics, um, one in Holly and one in Eulen. So those are also listed as um, the clinics that testing can occur. Minnesota has uh, received an executive order from Governor Walls, um, and as he talks about, Minnesota has made um, significant headway in securing their personal protective equipment and improving their testing um, and hospital surgery capacity. So they're allowing in Minnesota that some healthcare facilities to take some steps to provide a wider range of clinically necessary care. And this allows hospitals, ambulatory surgical centers, clinics, um, and which include veterinarian, medical, and dental to resume some of their currently delayed procedures once those facilities have adequately planned and prioritized and are ensuring a safe environment for their staff, patients, and visitors. As Desi talked about, it, it this is a difficult time. We've been adjusting as we go along. It's, uh, change is very difficult. And so it's been difficult for our community, for our family members, our coworkers. Um, so now is the time to continue to support each other and use the resources in our community. May is National Mental Health Month. So we're asking everyone, just take a moment and check in um, on how you are feeling. Everybody is affected with the new normal and the new experiences through this pandemic. And no one is weak for feeling frustrated, anxious, and upset. Um, as we look at mental health, we, we want to liken it um, in some respects to how you take care of yourself. So just like on an airplane, when you need to put on your own oxy oxygen mask first before you put on uh, um, one on another, it's similar to mental health, where we're really asking you take care of yourself first 
so that you are able to take care of others and those around you. Mental Health um, America um, continually puts out, you know, create your health, healthy routines. Don't ignore how you're feeling. And, and remember that there are mental health professionals that are available to help you through this time. Also reach out to your faith communities, check in with each other and connect with each other. There are also local resources and don't forget to use first link dial 211 to reach out and speak with others. I'd also like to take this time as others have done now to acknowledge so many of the people that are serving our communities. This includes both the public health departments in our metro region. We as public health directors really depend on our public health teams um, with all of our community response efforts. And we know the time that they're putting in to do this. So we want to acknowledge them particularly. We also want to acknowledge all of our frontline workers, our healthcare workers, both in the healthcare systems and in all of our congregate care settings. We appreciate all of the diligence and showing up every day. We also want to appreciate first responders, other community partners, emergency managers, and all that have been taking time and working through this, um, this pandemic. A special thank you to our child care providers, our teachers, and other educators of our young children. Friday is Child Care Provider Appreciation Day. So we really want to appreciate all of those individuals as well. And thank you to the community for continuing to persevere and follow in all of the public health measures. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Rich Vetter, Chief CMO for Essentia. Great. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mayor Mahoney. Uh, I also would like to start today by doing a call out uh, for Nurses Day as well. Uh, I would ask that we all take a moment today uh, to recognize and thank the nurses in our communities for all that they do uh, every day, uh, but particularly in this uh, current health crisis. Uh, I personally want to thank each one of you nurses for your compassion, your dedication to healing. Uh, we could not provide the care for our patients and our communities without you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to begin today um, talking a little bit about uh, the first steps that we're taking to open up our businesses and our economy and what we're doing at Essential Health to open up our health care services. It's become obvious to us that we're going to be living in a new reality, this world of COVID-19 for some time. So the question we've been asking ourselves is how do we provide medical services for our patients, our communities, while keeping everyone safe? The last several weeks, uh, we've been discussing at this meeting and other forums uh, the unintended consequences of not addressing non-COVID non health-related concerns. I recently read a study, uh, a national online survey, which showed that 78% of respondents uh, were worried that they or someone in their immediate family might catch the coronavirus. 55% indicated that they or someone in their household had delayed or skipped medical care due due to concerns about uh, COVID-19. About a third of people uh, missed or canceled visits due to a safety concern about coming to the clinic or hospital. And that's a similar number that we've been recognizing here in Fargo-Moorhead, that about a third of our patients, when we're reaching out to them, have concerns about coming in. We've also recognized or been hearing increasing concerns about job loss, uh, the economic impact, uh, potential loss of health insurance, uh, concern about out-of-pocket expenses, and just want to acknowledge that all of these concerns are real uh, and we all recognize those. I think one of the challenges over the last several uh, weeks and months has really been about, around some of the mixed messaging that you might have heard. You know, initially we were talking about, you know, masks don't provide benefit. Now we're talking about universal masking. We talked about, you know, everyone stay at home, and now we're asking you to come out and get the health care that you need. We've talked about, you know, most of us recovering and not having a significant impact or illness from a COVID infection to the daily deaths that we see on our news reports. So I think all of these send a lot of mixed messages and uh, just want to recognize the concerns uh, and hopefully bring some clarity around some of that. So what I'd like to do today is reassure the public that what we're doing at Essential, just like many other organizations and healthcare facilities, 
what we're doing in our clinics, hospitals uh, to keep you safe and keep our staff safe. So again, we're screening all of our patients, staff, and visitors entering our facilities for symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, we're testing patients for COVID infection prior to many invasive procedures or surgeries or other diagnostic tests. Uh, we're utilizing our rapid in-house testing now for emergent and urgent care where we can get results back in 45 to 60 minutes. And then for those non-urgent non or more elective cases, we're using our state and Mayo labs um, and asking for a 72 hour turnaround time and then asking our patients to self quarantine for that time frame. Uh, we have more robust monitoring of our supplies and pers personal protective equipment than we've ever had. And we can monitor this real time uh, daily so that we know that we have the supplies and the protective equipment uh, to deal with any acute infectious cases that might uh, be increasing. Uh, we made changes to our facilities, uh, both to maintain better physical separation, uh, signage reminders, uh, chair separations in our waiting rooms, for example. Uh, Desi talked about the universal masking and we're asking that all of our patient staff and visitors do that. We have hand sanitizers at every corner and on uh, every, uh, by every door uh, to help keep us safe. Uh, we're doing more meticulous cleaning and disinfecting of our rooms, equipment, countertops, doorknobs, and doing it multiple times a day between patients. The benefit of virtual visits is that has allowed us to stagger our face-to-face -face visits uh, with uh, virtual visits, uh, so it limits the number of people in the clinic or facility at one time. So again, a whole host of things that we and others are doing uh, to make sure that when you do have a health-related concern, we can care for you in a safe manner. Just want to make a few comments about testing. We've added some additional testing capacity, uh, both in Fargo as well as in Duluth, uh, for in-house testing this past week. Uh, we continue to use our send-out uh, reference labs as well. We've added test sites uh, in Ada, Faustin, Graceville, Lisbon, and Wapaton uh, to have better uh, testing or more easy accessible test sites for the residents of those communities. Uh, just wanna make a mention of the number of cases we currently have within uh, Essentia Health West. Uh, it's this week has been averaging around eight to 10 and it's been stable uh, mostly this week. Uh, in closing, I also also want to touch on the importance of recognizing the emotional strain that this has had on all of us, our families, and our community. And particularly want to call out those that have pre-existing behavioral health concerns or addictions. This has been especially trying for them as well. Just want to make sure that we're reaching out to them and recognizing that this uh, is going to lead to increased rates of depression, anxiety, uh, alcohol, and drug use. Some of the things that uh, have already been mentioned that I just wanna remind people that we can all do to keep, our, keep us emotionally uh, safe and healthy, keep routines, uh, get enough sleep, follow a good healthy diet, regular exercise, make sure you take time every day to get out even for just a brief period of time. Social connection, make sure that you stay connected with others, whether it's to text messaging, calling, FaceTiming, and a special call out also to not forget our kids. You know, our kids are feeling the same stressors and identify those same stressors that we feel. So pay special attention to them as well. And then if you need help, make sure that you reach out. Many behavioral health professionals now can provide care virtually. Uh, and that's been a real um, silver lining in, in this uh, recent crisis. So if you have needs, uh, please feel free to reach out. So again, I'd just like to end by, again, thanking our nurses on this uh, Nurses' Day for everything that they do uh, and for helping keep us all safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vetter. Our next speaker is from Sanford, Vice President and Chief Medical Officer, Doug Griffin. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to participate in this forum and for providing me the opportunity to provide an update about how Sanford is protecting our patients, staff, and community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are caring uh, currently for 32 patients uh, in our dedicated COVID unit uh, this morning. That includes both Minnesota and North Dakota residents. 
Uh, we have 49 Sanford Fargo employees who tested positive for COVID-19. None have acquired the infection from patient care, however. Uh, 30 of them have already returned to work and the others are all recovering at home. Our COVID-19 uh, drive-through testing continues to run very smoothly. Uh, we'll continue to have uh, 150 or more appointments uh, daily for that. Uh, we are supporting businesses as they continue to support their employees during the pandemic. Uh, our occupational medicine clinic is providing consultation, training, guidelines, testing processes, and other resources as be re businesses begin to uh, start smart. Sanford continues to be uh, innovative in treating the COVID-19 patients. We are working to open several clinical trials for COVID-19 treatments, including prophylactic use of hydroxychloroquine to prevent or reduce the severity of COVID. On April 20th, we treated our first patient with blood plasma, convalescent plasma donated by people who had recovered from COVID. Since then, we've treated several more, joining a national clinical trial effort it's still early, but we're optimistic that the disease fighting antibodies found in the plasma could potentially slow the progression of the disease in our sickest patients. Sanford's new COVID home monitoring program started this last week. We have several patients taking advantage of it. They're able to measure oxygen levels and temperature and have them monitored virtually uh, from home by Sanford. This allows more patients to know when to stay home and when to come in and see the doctor. We have seen serious challenges with those who have delayed getting care, including situations where chronic conditions that can be treated develop into more serious conditions, including heart attacks and strokes. Also delaying screening such as mammography and colonoscopies can have serious consequences. We strongly encourage everyone to seek health care, those who have chronic conditions or are in need of essential care, as well as those who need routine appointments, immunizations, and preventive screenings. Our promise in these uncertain times is to continue to keep patients and staff safe. We are closely following state and federal guidelines and have implemented conference and safety measures designed to prevent the transmission of the virus. PPE and face masks are required for all Sanford health caregivers at all times. We do employ temperature screenings at all locations daily. We're limiting personnel, personal and visitors in procedure and operating rooms and have established preoperative COVID testing for all surgery patients. We've installed plexiglass and social distancing measures in our clinic waiting areas and we've significantly increased cleaning and disinfecting of our patient rooms, procedural areas, and waiting areas. With the support and diligence of our communities, we have flattened the curve and slowed the spread of the virus, but the efforts need to continue. Today, as mentioned, is National Nurses Day and the start of National Nurses Week. I could think of no other day more appropriate to celebrate and honor our nurses. This is a unique Nurses Week, and I am so proud of how our nurses have responded and risen to the challenge. I see their incredible strength and perseverance, and I am truly humbled to work alongside so many extraordinary nurses each and every day. They keep our hospitals, clinics, and medical centers going strong. Please join me in thanking once again the nurses everywhere for all they do every day, and especially during this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for your insight, Dr. Vetter and Dr. Griffin. The public also always appreciates a look inside our two largest healthcare systems. Beginning on May 4th, City of Fargo has enacted reopening Fargo Phase 1 plans. These plans are made by city leadership in coordination with department and division heads to safely and, and successfully reintegrate the public into our operations. It's great to see residents inside City Hall again. This is the only the beginning of our restart, which includes many precautions to protect the staff and our visitors. Some of the initiatives include frequent disinfection of surfaces, utilization of virtual and telephone interactions, and the staff engaging in individual symptom assessments before coming to work. The city is making many adjustments to prevent risks as best we can. 
As such, our plans include the deferment of all fees related to late payments on city utilities, no utility shutoffs due to lack of payment, and fare free MAT bus through June 30th. We are now more than two days into first phase, and I'm pleased to say that we've been successful so far. We had a commission meeting and a planning meeting this week, and it went very well, and we had more public in the, in the facility. Everybody involved in the group, everybody, uh, everyone involved in the reboot, including, including every member of Team Fargo, deserves a thank you for making adjustments and exhibiting versatility in this endeavor. Many of our community's businesses have also undertaken first steps in safe, phased reopenings process. The City of Fargo has been fielding many phone calls and emails from businesses planning to reopen. We will assist in the guidance as best we can, but it's important to remember the direction is coming from state level. The state resources like ND Response and the North Dakota Smart Restart guidelines are the backbone of this reboot. I want to take a moment to recognize our businesses who have been proactive and responsible in their actions. West Acres especially deserves commendation for, without prompting, temporarily closing its doors to the public to keep them safe during the pandemic. Thank you very much. This reopen is only the first phase and by no means marks the end of our battle with COVID-19. In fact, we must remain as diligent in our mitigation efforts as we have ever been. Now is not the time to do away with caution and to ignore what we've learned over the last few months. It is ultimately up to the people, not just the government or the policies, to take the appropriate actions to keep themselves, their loved ones, and our community safe. I would now like to introduce West Fargo Commission President Bernie Dardis. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Good morning, everyone on the panel. I'd like to thank you for your leadership, both the healthcare professionals and the elected officials for your roles in uh, guiding our community through this uh, difficult time. As the North Dakota Smart Restart Plan continues, the City of West Fargo would like to share that our staff has a phased return to work plan for our employees, as well as a phased opening for the public, and that is on our website. The timing for this is dependent on our ability to ensure our public buildings are properly supplied and set up to protect our staff and the public and our team has been working very diligently on that. Again, I'd like to encourage the community and stress the importance of visiting ndresponse.gov for information on the plan, phases, and guidelines for reopening businesses that were closed. We want our businesses and their customers to be familiar with the protocols so we can support each of them as much as possible while being safe. It's time where we are, it, it, it is a time where we are all learning and it's an educational time for businesses and the public to not forget to be ND smart by remembering to social distance, wear masks and wash hands. At the city, we are continuing to be North Dakota smart by continuing to have meetings online, wearing masks when we are near others and washing our hands thoroughly. The City of West Fargo has decided that the West Fargo Street Fair has been rescheduled to August 1st, and a reminder that Municipal Court is scheduled to return on June 1st. There will be more details on our website regarding this rescheduled event. I encourage our local businesses to take advantage of state and federal loans by contacting their lenders and applying for the Bank of North Dakota's PACE or SELF programs and the small administration's Paycheck Protection Program. West Fargo businesses are also highly encouraged to answer a business task force uh, survey being conducted by the Greater Fargo-Moorhead Economic Development Corporation by this Friday. The results from this survey will help our economic development team assess the needs of our communities as we develop our economic recovery strategy. For this survey, go to the Fargo-Moorhead Economic Development webpage for additional resources, go to the North Dakota Department of Public of Health. Residents should also follow the CAS Public Health, the North Dakota Department of Health, and the North Dakota Department of Commerce and North Dakota Response to keep up with the latest public health uh, issues. 
Earlier in this conversation, Mrs. Fleming told us that 51% of the cases in North Dakota are in Cass County, and we're experiencing an upward trend. We have a risk of a rapid increase. With that would lead to possible restrictions being reinstated. So I'm encouraging the residents of Cass County and Clay County, they're our neighbors, that we have to do everything we can to be, continue to be vigilant to the health care protocols. These people, the frontline folks that we have in the health care community, are doing so much to protect us. We have to do all that we can to protect ourselves, to protect our families and our loved ones, to protect your fellow workers, and to protect your neighbors. This is on us, folks. We need to do everything that we possibly can to follow these protocols, or this virus is gonna be with us for a very long time. Thank you all for your doing, and as everyone else has said, happy Nurses Day, nurses. You're new heroes of mine for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Dardis. Our next speaker is Moorhead Mayor Jonathan Judd. Uh, thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Uh, also, thank you all uh, being a part of this team uh, to get the information out uh, to uh, the residents in our region. Uh, I think I'll just begin by stating, uh, first of all, I think people already are aware, but uh, the stay at home, uh, 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 the stay at home order has been extended to May 18th. I'm sure once we get closer to that date, uh, Governor Walls and his team will put out any uh, changes or any other recommendations uh, that may be uh, pertinent moving forward. Also, that city facilities uh, are still closed to the public. However, all staff are currently remain on the job. They're teleworking as much as possible and practicing health precautions in the office as well as in the field. Also, uh, the city manager, Chris, Christina Volkers, and her team are, working, are, are currently working on the transition plan that is consistent with uh, Governor Walls and his uh, executive orders that are coming forward. Also, some businesses uh, in the city began reopening on May, oh, I'm sorry, on April 27th, uh, and others are still remaining uh, closed at this time, but we are asking uh, folks <clears throat> within the, uh, the uh, city, please, uh, uh, do, do the best that you can to uh, support um, our local businesses. Uh, my understanding from uh, Sherry Larson from the Moorhead Business Association is that this is Small Business Week. So throughout the region, no matter where you live, where you work, if you have the opportunity and if you are able, please get out and support your local small businesses. Uh, they really need us right now. And so uh, to assist and aid in this economic recovery, uh, anything that you can do to be supportive is greatly appreciated. Uh, I do want to echo uh, briefly uh, the sentiment shared by folks earlier about uh, uh, those right now that are in a stressful time uh, that might need support regarding mental health and chemical dependency help. I do want to touch on one thing real brief uh, as well that we also need to be concerned about is uh, in talking with um, our sheriff, we had a, 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 a brief conversation about you know what uh, law enforcement and first responders are having to work with right now. Uh, a couple of days ago, we are seeing an uptick in domestic violence cases. <clears throat> and I know that this could be a uncomfortable subject for many to discuss, but I think we all need to be aware that there, there are avenues, there are alternatives, rather than resulting in a domestic violence related incident. Again, we know that this is a very stressful time. There's financial hardships, there's emotional hardships. Uh, we, where our families are, together for an extended amount of time, and sometimes these stresses can boil over. Please, please look for other alternatives to cope with the stress. Uh, you know, again, as, as already stated, our kids are going through a lot. 
I'm sure as spouses, we're going through a lot. We have a lot of, on our minds. There's healthier alternatives to look at rather than taking the stress out on a loved one. So please, if, if, if any of these, any factors that you see that might be, that might be causing you more stress, whether it's, it's mental health, whether it's uh, substance addiction, or whether it's just finding out better ways to deal with stress, please take time to take a breath. As Desi stated earlier, calm down, go for a walk, go, go talk to a friend, someone who you trust, but please, what makes our region strong is the strength of our families. And it is really important to keep that family strong and as a resource rather than destroying it by an act of domestic abuse. So uh, please find that help if you need it. And then I'll just end by saying again, happy National Nurses Day. Thank you all for your work uh, being on the front lines and, and blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Judd. Our next speaker is Cass County uh, President Chad Peterson, Chairman, I believe. Hey, Mr. Mayor, you can call me whatever you like. It all works. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you to everyone still working from home and socially distancing when you're out and about. And as always, thank you to everyone on the call, public staff, first responders, healthcare workers, as well as all the business owners and staff that are now, at least in part, back at work. Know this, your government agencies at CAST are still open and running by appointment only. Courthouse. At the courthouse when you arrive, there'll be paper face masks available upon entry. We ask the public to wear these disposable masks or one of your own when visiting county offices. Human services. New programs. There's assistance available for renters who have fallen behind in their payments if they meet certain income guidelines. Let me say that again. There is assistance available for renters who have fallen behind in their payments if they meet certain income guidelines. Information on the COVID emergency rent bridge can be found at cascountynd.gov backslash economic help. Again, cascountynd.gov backslash economic help. At our VSO, Cass County Veterans Offices, we continue to serve as always. Our VSO has had over 330 phone calls and emails in April. They're still meeting face-to-face -face with appointments on Tuesday only. They had 36 office visits last month. If you are in need of help or advice, please contact us. The DAV has grant for unemployment relief that can be found at dav.org backslash COVID relief. Again, dav.org backslash COVID relief. One program I've not talked about is Cass County Extensions. Cass County Extension has great COVID-19 resources available, including information on personal and family finance, nutrition, food safety, resources available to help you grow a, a wonderful garden if you're feeling spunky. Th things like this, links to all this information can be found at cascountynd.gov backslash extension. Stay up to date with any changes moving forward, as, as, as always here too, uh, by following cascountynd.gov on Twitter and Facebook. Now my final thought here. As I and others have said many times, the power to prevent this spread doesn't come from us. Wearing masks when you're around others, socially distancing when you're out, maybe taking one extra pass with a sanitizing wipe on the equipment when you're at the gym. They seem like little things, but they've proven to be effective. All we can do is guide and ask that you make good choices in an effort to slow things down while we wait for a cure. Please be North Dakota, Minnesota smart. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Chad. Our last speaker is Jim Haney, East Clay County Commissioner, Vice Chair. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. I just want to clarify, Clay County has 215 positive cases that have been tested thus far. That said, Minnesota has taken proactive steps to ensure that we are ahead of the curve on COVID-19 prevention and response. Governor Waltz has extended the statewide stay-at-home order until May 18th to keep taking these steps. Minnesotans have been doing a great job following guidelines. The state and our counties have benefited from everyone's response and we are now able to open slowly. 
This past week on May 4th, retail businesses were able to offer curbside pickup. As time goes on, we will eventually open all stores and businesses. Locally, Clay County is in the process of creating a back-to-work policy so we can serve customers by a slow reopening of government services following the governor's stay-at-home order. The county will continue to follow public health guidance to keep employees and customers safe. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some of the essential businesses who have been working diligently every day during the pandemic. Grocery stores, gas stations, restaurants, delivery services, postal workers, and so many others. Thank you to everyone who's continued to work diligently to serve our community. We also want to acknowledge the many who had, had to put their work on hold during this time to keep our community safe. Our Fargo-Moorhead area is unique in that we have one large metro area that is following guidance of two states. Our communities have been through many difficulties together over the years, such as fighting numerous floods, responding to disease outbreaks such as H1N1, and now this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you to everyone for doing your part, looking out for your neighbors, and supporting all the community efforts. And I want to acknowledge Nurses Day. Our mother was a nurse and she taught many nurses in the school in Detroit Lakes. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney and all here. Thank you, Jim. I'm just surprised you and Mayor Judd didn't talk about that fishing opener, but that's fine. Thank you for everybody today. We had a good session. I think it's very informative to the group. And once again, uh, we have to coexist with this virus. We're gonna have to learn how to manage it the best we can. So thank you everybody, have a good day.